Hello, I'm Richard Gann, Managing Partner of 1031 Capital Solutions. The stock market certainly is frothy these days, considering we are in the middle of a pandemic and facing a possible worldwide recession. One common measure of stock market health is the price per earnings ratio of the S&P 500, or PE ratio. This measures the weighted average price of hundreds of company stocks against their earnings. Earnings can be trailing or forward, while the price is always current. For example, if the S&P 500 PE ratio is 15, the average price of stocks in the index is 15 times their average earnings. When a PE ratio goes up, it means that people are now willing to pay more money for a stock or index relative to its earnings. This metric for stocks is analogous to capitalization rates in real estate. A cap rate measures how much people are willing to pay for a type of property relative to its income. Now, of course, there are two important differences between PE ratios and cap rates. First, corporate earnings don't always translate into income for investors. And second, cap rates place the price on the bottom of the fraction bar, not the top. Let's come back to P.E. ratios. In February of 2020, just before the pandemic, the S&P 500's forward P.E. ratio hit 19 for the first time in 20 years. In September, the ratio hit 21.5. Why are people today willing to buy a stock on average for a price that is 21 and a half times its earnings? If the only answer is that novice millennials are artificially driving stock prices up, then we may have a bubble on our hands. Statistical analysis supports this view. According to JP Morgan, when this ratio has reached 21.5 in the past, the average subsequent five-year return for the S&P 500 has been zero. This is not to suggest a complete causal relationship between PE ratios and five-year stock returns, but the numbers are compelling. If you could go back in time with no other information other than forward PE ratios, you would sell your S&P 500 index fund every time the number hit 21.5. In real estate, we can flip cap rates to look like PE ratios. For example, according to the NAR, the national inverse cap rate for Class A apartments in the first half of 2020 was 18.5. In other words, institutions were willing to buy Class A apartments for 18.5 times their earnings, or more specifically, their net operating income. Knowing that real estate income is tax advantaged, that properties can be traded without recognizing capital gains, that Class A apartment revenues are historically stable, and that such properties have considerable intrinsic value, why? Why would a rational person pay more for an index of stocks than a portfolio of institutionally managed real estate? I don't know the answer, but I suspect a seasoned gambler could explain the rationale better than an economist. If you are interested in shifting from gambling to investing, please give 1031 Capital Solutions a call today. Thank you.